doing stoichiometry in redox reactions can involve a lot of times titrations. Titrations of what, which means you're pouring one solution into another solution and looking for something called a visible endpoint. And we'll talk about how you can actually identify that in a redox titration as opposed to titrations involving the acids and bases where generally we use chemical indicators to be able to give us a visible endpoint. And why are we doing that in the first place? Always to find an unknown concentration or volume. We're looking to investigate to find something out that we don't know. So now here's the question. 30 milliliters of a 0.2 mole per liter tin 2 chloride solution. And we're going to titrate that into 20 milliliters of acidified potassium permanganate solution until you get this visible endpoint reached. And the question is, I don't know what the concentration is of the KMnO4. Those brackets meaning concentration. Find the original KMnO4 concentration. So you've got this, this flask. That's a, that's a flask. And you've got some KMnO4 in it, 20 milliliters, right? That's what I said, right? And you're going to pour into it this SnCl2 solution, and a reaction's going to take place, and something's going to happen. There's going to be a color change that's going to happen. And when that color change occurs, you're going to be able to do some stoichiometry to be able to figure out an unknown quantity. And I'll tell you why that, that, that color change occurs as well. So, what do you do? Where do you start? Hey, listen, it's a redox question. Make a list of chemicals so you can find your strongest oxidizing agent and strongest reducing agent. So, in all of this, this question right here, what you've got is tin 2 chloride, you break it into its ions, potassium permanganate, you break it into its ions, and that's what I did in this list of chemicals here. SN2 positive, Cl negative, MnO4 negative. Oh, by the way, I didn't write the K positive, which is also present for the permanganate, right? Here's the H positive. I said it was acidified. Well, hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, pick one. Yeah, okay, whichever, pick it. So I'm just putting H positive in the list because it's a acidified solution. And of course, water is always present as well. Water could end up being your strong oxidizing or reducing agent, so you have to be careful on your list of chemicals to always include water. Now, when you look at this entire list and you take your data booklet or your redox table and you find the highest thing on the left and the lowest on the right, your strongest oxidizing and strongest reducing agent, the one with the, the highest voltage positive and the lowest voltage negative that you're going to add together, you would find for this set of chemicals here, that the permanganate, since it's acidified, qualifies it as being the strongest oxidizing agent, and it is when you check it on the chart, at 1.51 volts. And the tin 2 ion is on the right hand side. Hey, chem guy, I found it on the left. It's on the left. It's on both sides. Fe2 positive is on both sides. Sn2 positive. Uh, chromium ion, Sn, uh, Cr2 positive. Water's on both sides. They're just found as oxidizing and reducing agents. Be careful on your chart, just look carefully, and you'll be able to find the lowest one on the right being the SN2 positive here. So what I did was, I took this half reaction, the permanganate half reaction, and wrote it out exactly the way it looks in the data booklet, but I didn't put the states of matter in. You've been noticing I haven't done that so far in the redox unit too much, but I will for the net equation. And then, I take the reverse of that reaction, the SRA, and then I'll put it down as well. What do I do? I multiply this one by 5 and this one by 2 in order to add the two together to get my net equation. And you need your net equation and you've got to write your net equation. And some of you are saying, oh, Kem, God, come on. I just got numbers here. I'm just going to plug them in the calculator. I'm going to figure it out. And if you don't write the reaction, what's going to happen is you're going to mess up the mole to mole ratio. You've got to be careful. So write the reaction. Do everything properly. Now, what you're going to get is 2MnO4 negative plus 8H positive plus, okay, just hang on. I'll just get this on the board here and I'll show you. Okay, there's your net equation for this reaction. Now, take a look at the ratios here. This, there's the big numbers there, right? And you need to use those ratios to do the stoichiometry. Okay, where are we going with this? We got 30 milliliters of 0.2 mole per liter of of a tin 2 chloride, which is represented by this chemical right here. So that's 30.0 milliliters of that, and 0 0.20 moles per liter is its concentration. The volume of this that we are using 
is 20 milliliters and we're asked to find the concentration here. What's going on? What's, what's the story again? Well, the thing is, you know that when these two hit a 2 to 5 mole ratio between themselves, then you will completely have reacted all of the reactants and be left with all the products in the reaction when they react in their mole to mole ratio. So here's the thing, at that visible endpoint, that's telling you that this color of ion, well, by the way, permanganate, you, you gotta look it up on a color chart too, and hopefully you're given one. Permanganate's a purple color. And the manganese ion here is kind of a pale pinky type of color. Well, guess what's gonna happen? At the visible endpoint, this chemical is all gone because it's completely reacted in a two to five mole ratio with this chemical, done, and then you're left with this one in solution. Now, by the way, this chemical and this one here on a color chart, uh, the color chart that I've got, actually says that they're colorless. Um, so if that's the case, this solution goes from a purple color in, at the beginning to one that's light pink or so. And when you get that light pink color, you stop titrating and you're going, hey, just look what I got here. It went from purple to pink. So that means now that I've completely reacted this away and it's gone. And I hopefully I've just stopped that titration at the exact moment where the moles are equal, and that's hard to do. But what I can do now is I can say, okay, if I know that it took 30 milliliters to titrate of this chemical at this concentration into here, I can actually figure out what the concentration was at, that unknown concentration. So now look, it's just a matter of doing a little bit of solution type of stoichiometry, right? to be able to determine this unknown concentration. So, what you do is, I always just take, remember, I'm looking for the moles here, because if I find the moles here, I can use this mole to mole ratio, because the equation speaks molish, and then I can uh, use this volume to find the concentration. Watch how I do that. 0 decimal, 0, 3, 0, 0 liters, because that's how many liters that is. I'm just doing the conversion right away. Most of you are very comfortable with that, I know. And that's 0.2 moles of the SN2 positive per liter. Some teachers say, well, just write the whole original chemical name there. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, yeah, you, should, you could do that. I'll just put the SN2 positive for now. Sometimes I make students do that. Sometimes I don't. So, uh, right there, if I stop right there, well, that calculation right here gives me the, the, the liters cancel, and I've got moles of SN2 positive. But I don't want moles of SN2 positive. I don't want moles of SN2 positive, so you know what I do. I put that in the denominator, and that cancels just like I put that moles per liter there so the liters could cancel. What's the ratio of moles of SN2 positive to moles of permanganate ion? It's 5 to 2. So it's 5 here and 2 here. There you go. See, that's the ratio that you were looking for in the balanced reaction. You just can't do the math without the ratio there. And then... Now, what do I want? Well, I've got the moles of that, but I don't want the moles. I want the concentration. That's moles per liter. Divide by that. How do you divide by that? What are you talking about, Kim Guy? Oh, no, just put one on top. Remember that? Zero decimal, zero, two, zero, zero liters is what you have here. And if you just multiply by the reciprocal of that liters, you get one over liters there, and then moles per liter. And ladies and gentlemen, you can see that when you do that math right there, you're going to be able to get the answer, which is... 0.12 moles per liter of the permanganate ion in solution, or the potassium permanganate, the KMNO4 in the solution. That is an example of solution stoichiometry, a redox titration.